Akron Athletics presents. Brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling. Whatever it takes. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And the Spaghetti Warehouse. Located at 510 South Main Street, Building 33 in Akron, Ohio. Home of the 15 layer lasagna. And here's your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Zips Football Weekly with head coach Tom Arth. My name's Joe Dunn. We're with you each week to update you on the University of Akron football program. The Zips down in Athens, Ohio on Tuesday to take on the Ohio University Bobcats. 7 o'clock kickoff. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's bring in head coach Tom Arth. Coach, I know it wasn't the start that you wanted, but there were enough good things, I think, to build on that for Tuesday night. Uh, there certainly were, um, absolutely, as you as you mentioned, not uh, not the start yeah. that we wanted, but um, you know I think the the opening uh, sequence of the game, you know, was yeah. really what we were looking right. for, um, and I was really proud of our team, the way we came out and uh, you know got a stop on defense, forced a field goal, uh, able to come back down offensively, score a touchdown, and uh, really play pretty well on offense the rest of the half, and. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, late in late in the second quarter and early in the third quarter, the game started to get out of reach a little bit. Yeah. And um, but, you know, you look at uh, some of the great things in that game, um, you know, really, you know, just how how well our young offensive right. linemen played. And uh, we ran the ball uh, with much more right. uh, efficiency than we have uh, at any point uh, since we've been here. And, and that was really good to see. You started uh, the freshman Zach Gibson at quarterback. We weren't sure who was going to take the field. He really separated himself in practice, and that's why he got to start. Yeah, he did, and it was you know it was it was really a, a tough competition as we yeah. discussed last week, and um, you know, but in the end, those you know the last few days, I think Zach really won the job, and that's what you that's what you hope for. You know, you don't want to ever make that decision as a coach. You really want somebody to to win the position and win win the team over, and I thought that Zach did that, and um, that's not to take away anything uh, from from TJ and yeah. the way that he competed and performed. Um, but, you know, felt that Zach, um, you know, was right for uh, our team. And, um, you know, I think he, you know, he played well. He can certainly play better, um, but it was a good, uh, good start for him. Okay, let's go back to InfoCision Stadium this past Wednesday night. Let's pick up first half highlights, Coach. And I love the aggressiveness you showed in that uh, onside kick. It was there just a step too soon. You had the football just offside. Yeah, you know, it was something we had talked about uh, from the beginning of the week last week, and our team knew uh, we were going to do it. We were excited about it, and we knew we were going to get a great look. And unfortunately, we were just a little bit overzealous, and, uh, you know, we're about a step off sides. I thought your defense played well, too, in Western's first possession. You got an 11-yard sack from Michael Scott. Defense holds, and they have to settle for a field goal. That was huge, um, you know, particularly after giving up the big kickoff return. Um, that was really big for us to be able to come out there, get the sack on second down, and, and force a field goal. Michael Scott, you see him celebrating right there. And as we said, the zip defense was into it in that first possession. Western had to settle for a field goal. Defense, uh, not real big coach, but you got a little more speed maybe this year in the secondary and the linebacking group. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we're definitely, uh, definitely still, uh, still getting bigger and, uh, you know, definitely, you know, getting more athletic uh, in the back end, which is important for us. Um, so it was good to, good to see that first initial stop and, um, you know, then obviously the offense coming down and, and making some big plays uh, to take the lead, early lead in the game. Yeah, they were seeing the first possession, which I thought was a great possession. Tian Dollard, a 45-yard run down to the 19-yard line. Uh, Zach Gibson was three for three on that drive. Take another look at it, Coach, from ground level. What do you see? You know, it was really well executed uh, in the blocking scheme, and then Tion, uh, Tion made a great run, and it was, uh, it was important for us. Uh, we wanted to be aggressive. We had a fourth and one opportunity and, and really felt that, uh, that we could get it, and it, it proved to be um, you know, a really impactful uh, play in the game and gave us an opportunity to, to hit Mike for, for a touchdown here. Yeah, 14-yard touchdown pass on a slant pattern. I like the way Zach Gibson got the ball out in a hurry. He was really quick with the pass. He, he was, and that was, uh, that was by design. Um, you know, really wanted to get the ball out of his hands quickly early in the game, you know, build the confidence of the offensive line, um, you know, build the confidence, you know, in Zach, and also, you know, get the ball to, to our playmakers early in the game and, and let them uh, get comfortable and let them get started. There's Zach Gibson on a uh, short pass. As we said, I thought the offense played well early. Unfortunately, uh, Western scored on the next two possessions there in the first quarter, but 
there were enough good things from the offense, that I think, to really uh, show some promise for the future. Absolutely, and I think it's just, you know, it's having that ability to, you know, to play, to play a complete game, and I think we started to press offensively a little bit in the second half, and, um, you know, instead of doing all the things that were working for us early in the game, uh, we were pressing and, and getting out of our rhythm a little bit, and, uh, you know, it showed. You know, when we play within the system, we play well and play smart, uh, we, can be a, we can be a good offense. A few plays ago, we saw Corey Schmeagel uh, hit a 41-yard field goal. Western led at that time 16 to 10. As you can see, they're leading 23 to 10 right now. But Corey Schmeagel really worked hard, coach, and he's going to be a weapon for it if you get down and you need a field goal. He is. Um, you know, he's proven to be very uh, reliable and very consistent here throughout our training camp. And uh, given his first two opportunities this season, um, he, he came through in the clutch for us. And, you know, we're, we're very excited to see that. Had Boogie Knight on a 24-yard run. It's going to set up another Smeagol field goal. This one from about 28 yards away, Coach. Makes it 23-10, to 10, and you're very much in the football game right now. Yeah, this, uh, this got us to, you know, to, to within 10 points, uh, you know, heading, you know, heading you know, late in the second quarter, and we felt great about that. We felt great about where we were, and you know, now it's just you know, being able to go out there and play together as a team and get that big stop, the next yeah. possession with your defense, and get the ball right back to your offense who's confident. Um, you know, and unfortunately, you know, we weren't, we weren't able to do that. What do you say to your uh, team at halftime, Coach? You played pretty well the first quarter. You're still in the football game at halftime. What you tell them in the locker room? Well, you know, really uh, just that. You know, we had the ball. Uh, yeah. We had the ball coming out, and I think at that point, uh, you know, it was, it was 30 uh, to 13, and right. we knew, hey, all we, you know, all we have to do is, is go down, put a great drive together. Um, you know, we go score, you know, go score a touchdown, and it's a 10-point ball game with, you know, 10 minutes to go in the third quarter, and you feel really great about where you are, and that gives your defense some confidence and, you know, gives them that, you know, that extra motivation and, and, and incentive to go out there and get a great stop. It puts some pressure on, on your uh, opposing team and, and, and the play calling. Um, so, you know, it's just we got to have that ability to, you know, to apply consistent yeah. pressure. And I think if we can, you know, if we can continue to improve and continue to get to that point, um, I think we can, you know, we can find ourselves uh, in the fight late in the game. Sure. We're going to take a break. We're going to have second half highlights in a little bit, but right now we're going to uh, pause. When we come back, a special feature with athletic trainer Bill Drotty. Don't go away. We're back after this. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university, Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart, to aim high, then raise the bar. Because it's never settled for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise, and we are Akron. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes H. Jacks Plumbing and Heating. Find them at hjacks.com. Well, Zips athletic trainer Bill Drotty has been one of the busiest men on campus. Right now, we're going to take a look at how he's handled the COVID 19 pandemic. Things change on a minute by minute and day by day basis for us. And, and it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to quantify. Uh, you know, for, for me, the first thing I do in the morning is come in and, and report testing data from the day before to the state, the county, uh, the university, and, and, and other folks, and uh, just get prepared for testing for that day and, and literally cross our fingers and, and hope that uh, we don't have a positive or uh, contact that we have to, to, to deal with and work with. One of the biggest changes this year is any given day. Uh, I can get a call or text message very early in the morning. I've gotten texts all the way from, you know, 11.30 at night to 2.30 in the morning telling me someone has symptoms, is symptomatic, and for us, that is an automatic do not come to campus. So if I get that call, it's much more urgent and we have to make sure that we're doing everything right with those because the last thing we want them to do is come and spread it to other student athletes or other people in the campus community. So we do point of care testing typically, so we, we have our results within 20 minutes. Uh, that gives us the ability to, to take action quickly and, and get those kids out of practice and then uh, quickly try to establish who their close contacts may be so we can get them out of practices and meetings and what have you as well. Uh, then we really get into kind of the full-on contact tracing. Uh, one of my staff or, or, or us in conjunction 
We'll work on that uh, depending upon the sport that it is and talk to not only the individual that has tested positive, but uh, their roommates and their other contacts to really determine you know, who, who else would have to quarantine there. Um, and then from there, it just layers of letting the head coaches know, letting the administration know if, if it's somebody that's in the dorms coordinating with health and safety on campus and getting, getting a person moved to our, our quarantine dorm uh, so, so that you know, they, they can be away from others on campus. We talk a lot in sports medicine, really in society in general, about mental health with, with folks. And we're, we're fortunate to have a great team of, of mental health professionals that work with our, our student athletes and, and help them through uh, not only the day-to-day, -day, but you know, the quarantines and, and you know, other challenges that they're facing these days uh, that come with it. But uh, the other part is, is 18 to 22 year olds are, are resilient and, and they love to play sports and that's why they're here. And just like us, you know, being on the football field is the most normal part of our day. You know, being on the, the football field or the basketball court or the, the soccer field is the most normal part of their day. You know, our guys need to take into consideration that, you know, anyone that they interact with could be a potential carrier of COVID. And, and when you're asking them to not interact with other students and people like that, they've been accustomed to doing that in the past. Uh, that's a big challenge to ask of an 18 to 20 year old student athlete. Uh, it's a big challenge to ask of our staff because that's a, you know, it's a, it's a change for everyone and we try to do our best. Uh, but I think that that's one of the biggest things that, you know, it's, it's constantly there. And even when you're at home, unless you're alone in your room, um, there's potential for spread. Uh, we're never in this for the praise. Uh, from, from that standpoint, I think that at that point in time, it'll be nice just to take a deep breath and to be able to relax and, and not have to worry about all the different aspects of COVID that can interfere with the day-to-day -day athletic training responsibilities. And I think that it'll make you appreciate just the small nuances of the job and not the fact that you're dealing with a pandemic and COVID at that point in time, that you can just focus on your job do your job and you can and do it you know the best of your ability with what you're trained to do just a reminder that our feature each week is brought to you by spaghetti warehouse our thanks to bill Dratty for being part of that this week and coach as we said during the break that is a never-ending job 24 7 to try and contain it it sure is and our, our medical staff led by bill Dratty has done an absolutely fantastic job they have um, you know made our lives a lot easier as players and coaches and um, you know, I think at, at every point we have felt nothing but safe and felt mm -hmm. that we have the best protocols in place and um, that we're doing all of the right things. And, um, you know, can't thank Bill and, and his staff, Mark, uh, you know, and all our athletic trainers enough, um, you know, all the, the resources that have been poured into, you know, our program, uh, testing the nurses that are coming to our campus every day uh, to assist our program and to do it as efficiently as possible within our schedule. Um, it really means a lot to us, and it's uh, you know it's been it's been uh, you know really very much appreciated. It's not just the players and coaches he has to watch out for; it's also the student trainers and managers. It's about a 150-man bubble that he's got to watch over. It is, and that's just in football. And yeah, you know that right. doesn't you know even begin to scratch the surface on the rest of the athletic right, department. Right. And, you know, and then you multiply in all the contacts that you know our student athletes have yeah. with the the rest of campus and their families and and all those things, it's just, uh, it's an exhausting process. And uh, we're very fortunate at, at Akron to have yeah. someone uh, with Bill's expertise and ability to, to manage all of this. Thanks again to Bill Durati. We're gonna take a break, come back and watch second half highlights right after this. <laughs> Miller Lite is brewed for great taste with only 96 calories and zero grams of sugar. So when one's done, it's the perfect time to start another. Miller Lite, hold true. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on and to keep your family warm this winter? Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. 
Okay, welcome back to Zips Football Weekly with head coach Tom Arth. We are at halftime. The Zips taking the field right now for the second half kickoff. And coach, we're going to get the ball and a lot of expectations in that second half. You did some good things in the first half. Now you're hoping to get in and make it a game. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we felt great. We had great confidence uh, going into halftime as a team and knew we were getting the football. And, um, you know, that's such a critical point in the game. And, you know, it's something that we really emphasize today as a team is that those middle eight minutes, the last four minutes of the, of the second quarter, first four minutes of the third quarter are so critical. And if you look at it over the last five seasons in college football, the teams that win that middle eight win 76% yeah. of the time. And, you know, that's been an area for us, you know, historically that we really can improve on. Yeah. And uh, it showed up uh, on, on Wednesday uh, for us as well. Um, and, uh, you know, hope, hopefully we'll be better at that moving forward. Yeah. I think you had the ball three times, Coach, in the third quarter. Got down as far as the Western 23 one time. Just couldn't get it in the end zone. You didn't want to kick field goal. You wanted to get back in the game with a touchdown. Yeah, you know, that was, that was one of those situations that was, uh, that was tough decision. You know, you really, uh, you know, you know you need a touchdown uh, to give yourself a chance. Um, but, you know, you wanted to also get Corey uh, that experience yeah. and that work as well. But, you know, we went for it, I believe, on a fourth and six. And, right. uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just, you know, missed it. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, outside of that, I thought, you know, our red zone execution was, was pretty good. So a nice uh, pass breakup by the uh, Zip secondary there in that third quarter. Saved a touchdown there. And there was a number of individual good plays throughout that uh, second half, Coach, by both the offense and the defense. Yeah, there, there, there certainly were. Um, you know, I think we, uh, you know, definitely played better as a team um, in the first half. Uh, there's, no, there's no question about that. Um, but, you know, we, we have to, you know, we have to deal with, uh, deal with the circumstance that we're in and we have to um, handle the adversity, you know, much better moving forward. And I think we'll, we'll be in better position to do that. Got into the fourth quarter, Coach, and there were a lot of zips that got their first taste of Division I football. It's got some game experience. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it, and that happened, uh, you know, right from the jump uh, yeah. as well. But, you know, we were able to get some more guys into the game uh, late, and um, it was good. You know, it's a great opportunity for those young players in your program to gain that experience and, you know, to have the opportunity to get out there against a good opponent. Um, you know, really does a lot for them in their development. Exactly. I thought some of the pluses for the game, Coach, as we continue to watch uh, highlights from the second half in that Wednesday night game against Western Michigan, I thought the running of Tion Dollard and Boogie Knight was really a plus for you. That was much better than we've seen last year, I thought. It was. It was very exciting uh, for us. And, you know, both Tion and Boogie both had explosive runs. They both made great plays, made, the, made guys miss, and, and ran hard. And we're going to count on those guys uh, as the season continues. Coach Boogie Knight, I think, working hard. And Zach Gibson was 18 for 30. I think he was 13 and 19 in the first half. He was. Uh, you know, again, really got off to a great start. And, um, you know, and I think that's where, again, you know, part of his development and his progress is going to be to stay consistent throughout the full game and to not press, um, you know, as we, as we move through it. And Michael Matheson came back after a, a good freshman year and caught six passes for it as a sophomore. Yeah, Mike's, uh, Mike's a great player, a uh, really hard worker. He's a leader in our program and uh, a guy that we try to get the ball to, you know, as often as we can. And, um, you know, he uh, unfortunately missed him in the second half. Um, but, you know, he's feeling much better today, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have him available this week. And on defense, we'll probably mention his name all season long, Bubba Arcelanian out of Aurora, Ohio, 11 tackles in the game. Yeah, Bubba, again, he's a, he's a see ball, get ball guy. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's what we're trying to do in our defense is just try to tie up as many people as we can and let Bubba run free and, and go make some plays. Exactly. Corey Smeagle, we talked before, Coach, he was two for two in field goals. How big is that confidence factor? He's two for two right now. I think he's feeling pretty good about himself going into that Ohio game. Yeah, he definitely is. You know, Corey's, uh, Corey's a confident player. Um, you know, he's a lot of fun to be around. He's a lot of fun to coach. Um, you know, we have a, a good, you know, good dialogue going back and forth just about every day. And, um, you know, he's, he's proven to be very consistent throughout training yeah. camp and had a good season for us last yes, year. Um, you know, and to be able to come out and, and make two kicks this week uh, for us was, was really big. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to announce our player of the game, our play of the game, have the scouting report on Ohio University. We're back with more of Zips Weekly right after this. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university. Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. 
crime on the rise, and we are Akron. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes H. Jacks Plumbing and Heating. Find them at hjacks.com. Okay, each week at this time, we're going to have our player of the game and our play of the game. And right now, let's take a look at one of the big plays that came early in that football game Wednesday night. And it all came about when Tian Dollard went 45 yards down the sidelines to set up what was our play of the game on second down and five from the Western Michigan 14-yard line. Zach Gibson hits Michael Matheson on a quick slant over the middle for a touchdown. And a Smeagol extra point makes it 7-3, to three, Coach, and we're all feeling pretty good. We certainly were. Uh, you know, very exciting moment uh, on the sideline. The energy was, was incredible, and uh, our team was ready to go. And that was, uh, that was great to see. The way we came out and started that game, uh, getting a stop on defense, coming right down the field, scoring a touchdown. Uh, you know, these guys were fired up, and, and they were ready to compete. Yeah, we saw that from ground level. And again, we talked about that quick release from your quarterback, Coach. He had to. That would, Get inside that cornerback. He's got to make that throw right now. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a great job uh, by Zach, um, you know, really uh, negotiating that linebacker and, and, and moving his body and adjusting his arm angle yeah. uh, to make an accurate throw uh, in stride to Mike to allow him to get in the end zone. Exactly. How about our player of the game? Young man out of Little Jefferson, Ohio. How about Boogie Knight? Little bit of everything on Wednesday night. He led the Zips in rushing with 74 yards. Caught two passes out of the backfield for 18 more yards. Had two kickoff returns for a combined 47 yards. And, Coach, I thought that was a great move, moving him to a running back because he's always going to give you 100%. He absolutely is. And, you know, Boogie, is, is he's one of those guys. He's just hes versatile. He's yeah. capable of doing a lot of things for your program. And, um, you know, having that opportunity to move him uh, really gave us some great depth. Um, and once we made that move, it didn't take us long to realize like Boogie can be a yeah. really good player for us back there. And, you know, you can see what he can do for us, uh, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. So he can be a great weapon. That was my next point, Coach. He played a lot of wide receiver last year. Now in the backfield, you can throw to him out of the backfield. That's an added plus. It, it definitely is. And it's, a, it's an element of our offense that is very important to us. And if we can, you know, utilize our running backs and get them involved in the pass game and create some matchup issues on yeah. linebackers, um, I think that, that's going to open up uh, some, more, some more plays for us. Right. Congratulations to uh, Boogie Knight, our player of the game. Well, it's not going to take long for the Zips to get back on the playing field. How about Tuesday night down in Athens, Ohio, 7 o'clock kickoff against the Ohio University Bobcats. Coach, they got beat the other night up at Central Michigan, 30-27. to Central Michigan kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter, but they were in that thing the entire game. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's you know one thing that you really see uh, with OU. They play so many close games. Last season, I think six of their 12 games uh, came down to, to seven points or less, uh, four of those games were three points or less. And then, you know, that showed up again, um, you know, in week one, um, you know, in, in, in a tough three-point game. Uh, so they're a very good football team. Uh, they present a lot of challenges offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And um, again, it'll be a great, uh, great opportunity for us to go out there and, and play our best. You talk about Ohio University football coach, another head coach from Cleveland, Frank Solich in his 16th season down at OU. Yeah, Coach Stolich, um, you know, is, is a coach that I have a lot of respect yeah. for. And, you know, all the, the ways that we describe their program and, and what you see when you watch on tape are those same things that, that we're trying to build here at the University of Akron and a competitive, tough, you know, smart team, you know, that plays hard week in and week out. And, and that's what OU does. And it's, uh, you know, they've been successful for a long time. Just when we thought we'd seen enough of the Rourke family, we're going to get another one on Tuesday night. This time it's Curtis Rourke. Starts at quarterback. Uh, last year it was Nathan Rourke, and I don't know if he's as good as his brother right now, Coach, but he's pretty good. He's, he's a very good player, and we will not miss Nathan. Yeah, I'll, I'll sure. say that. I'll miss watching him, uh, yeah. you know, on tape, uh, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the rest of the season when we're not playing against those guys. But, um, you know, you know they're, they're very good at quarterback. They have two guys that, uh, that play for them, and yeah. they each present different challenges, and, and we need to be ready for that. I think he was 12 out of 19 against Central Michigan, uh, 231 yards. But he's not the only weapon. They had a guy return a uh, kickoff for a touchdown against Central. 
Yeah, they did. Um, you know, that was a big play, big play in the game to open up the uh, open up the second half. And uh, we're going to have to do a great job uh, yeah. with that because obviously we, we were a little bit leaky early in the game on our yeah. kickoff coverage and gave up two big returns. So um, I'm sure OU is, is, is really chomping at the bit to have that opportunity to return. Exactly, some. exactly. Coach, thanks for stopping over today. Look forward to getting down uh, to Athens on Tuesday and getting win number one on the season. You can listen to that game on the Zips Radio Network. For Coach Tom Arth, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week. Always remember, go Zips. Brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling. Whatever it takes. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And the Spaghetti Warehouse, located at 510 South Main Street, Building 33 in Akron, Ohio, home of the 15-layer lasagna.